Hey guys, what's up? Uh, what's up? Uh, what's up? So today I have a little something for you. So we're going to be talking about fundamental analysis, right? I am sure majority of you all have checked out my blog, the blog post that I do on my website. So if not, I'm going to link it down below. So be sure you go check it out. It's really insightful. And I'm really going to pump out the blog content as well as the YouTube content. Uh, maybe YouTube, YouTube, YouTube stuff, let's say twice a week, because I want to really keep it, you know, quality, not just, okay, here's an execution video. Here's a breakdown video. No, I'm going to make it quality stuff. So expect the videos to be a bit longer than usual. And I promise you that you won't be disappointed <laughs> if you watch the entire thing. And if you don't just stop in the middle or just stop at the start. Okay. If you are, if you're stopping at the start, then come on. It's trading for you. I don't think so. If you're if you get really impatient, then mm, I don't know what to tell you. Okay. All right. So understanding the power of NFP on price. Okay. So now when we're talking about NFP, it's a really, really big deal, right? So it's a report that represents the number of jobs added or lost in the US economy in the past month. Right. So that's a really big deal because the health of an economy is really, really, really reflective on the what unemployment numbers. Okay, so now the non-farm payroll numbers, it actually excludes farming employment data because farming data or the data on farmers and who gets employed and who doesn't get employed, it's seasonal, right? So if, when I say it's seasonal, let's say September, there's a lot of hiring in September as opposed to July where there's no hiring in July. So it's not really a consistent number when it comes to adding the farming employment data into NFP. Okay. Now that can be a drawdown when we are saying, okay, sure. So that means that NFP is not really a true reflection, right? But no, I wouldn't say it's like that because we are just excluding one sector and that's the farming sector, right? So, so if we take, if we, if you, if, if you represent it as a basket of 10, 10 industries, only one industry is not there. So that means 90% of the US economy is still reflected in the NFP numbers. Okay. All right. So how does the data affect the economy as a whole? So there is a nice little effect going on, right? So number one, it affects the central bank. It affects consumer spending. And it also affects investor sentiment, right? So when we think about central banks, right? Strong employment numbers. So if it's green, right? It leads to interest rate hikes. Now here is why. If we have strong employment numbers, Okay, if we have strong employment numbers, what does that really mean? Strong employment numbers means that more people are getting employed. Yeah, so employment increases. And if employment increases, then they can spend more money. Consumer spending is now greater. So if they can spend more, that's good for the economy, right? So the central banks would love for economic growth. Okay, now that's one way of looking at it. Now, another way of looking at it is this. If the numbers, right, it's weak, okay, if the numbers are weak, then of course they are going to cut rates, right? So they're going to cut rates. So if they cut rates, if they decrease the interest rate, people are still going to do what they are going to borrow more. And if they borrow more, they can what? Spend more. If they can borrow more, they can spend more. So that's one aspect of things. Whereas if, like I said, if we have strong employment numbers, then that means that employment increases, more people get paid. And if more people get paid, they can still spend more. But what's the catch over here? They can spend more with the money coming out of their salaries. They don't have to go and take loans, right? So it's kind of a double-edged sword when you're looking at it. Both are good, but still both have downsides uh, with respect to other stuff uh, that comes into play when we're talking about economic policy. Okay. Now, investor sentiment. Now, investor sentiment goes like this, right? So if we have positive numbers, that means if, that means employment is high. So if employment is high, that will inadvertently lead to an increase in the stock market prices. That means that the prices of stocks are going to increase. So we're going to have a bull run. So if we do have a bull run, right, what does that mean? It means that investors, they are confident in the US market. So they're going to be putting more money into the stock market, 
okay they're going to be putting more money into the stock market but here's the thing it's not a major factor so when we talk about investor sentiment it's not a major factor because there's only a handful of investors right so they are yes they are putting money behind the stock market but come on just between you and me we know who runs the market <laughs> okay you can call me a conspiracy theorist but these small little investors nah, they are just not it okay so this is like the least most impressive factor that contributes to what the movement in stock prices right so finally we have like i explained earlier consumer spending so consumer spending is directly influenced by unemployment okay by the employment numbers so when employment is high people have more disposable income so if people have more disposable income then what they can spend more so increased spending equals to increased economic growth okay increased economic growth so that is a little fundamental analysis lecture that you need to know about how nfp affects these three key factors of course investor sentiment is not that important but it's good to know about it okay all right okay now the, now, now here's the fun part nfp and the dollar index so the dollar index is the most important thing that we have to uh, take a look at when we're doing our analysis every single week and also every single day right because the dollar index controls everything but what controls the dollar index the bonds okay so the dollar index is kind of the middleman you can take the bonds as well but then that's a whole other topic all right so now with the positive nfp readings we are going to get a strong dollar index whereas with the negative nfp reading we're going to get a weak dollar index okay now always remember this one thing just because we are getting a bullish reading okay does not mean that x x x usd should go down immediately no okay for example let's say that we have buy side liquidity okay and let's say this is euro usd and euro usd is trading here so upon nfp release the news is good for the dollar index that means euro usd should go down right but instead it just starts to spike up okay that's fine it's because the liquidity is here price cannot move without liquidity right price cannot move without liquidity so it's always important that you understand liquidity as the gas station before your car can move let me rephrase that the gas station that you have to go to before your car can move because let's face it right if you're if you're running low on gas yeah if you have a gas station here gas station a over here gas station b over here and you're right here right of course you're going to go to gas station a right mm. but what if you have a bit more gas remaining then of course you're going to gas station b right mm. okay so that's what you need to understand when it comes to how price will move or how price will respond when it comes to the uh, nfp reading okay so now let's look at how nfp's influence on technicals can be seen so I'm going to show you three examples. So in this example, this is the NFP release on the 7th of July. So you can see price was over here. So NFP was in this candle, price spiked up and then we spiked down and then we went up. Okay, now look at this. Clearly we can see that just prior to NFP, we took our liquidity. So we already went to a gas station and we fueled up. Okay, now after fueling up, yeah, after fueling up, we can move. So upon moving, we know that, okay, price needs to fill up in inefficiency. But here's the thing. This news release caused price to go up. Why is it causing price to go up? Because look, the sentiment is bullish. Why is it bullish? It's bullish for what? This is gold, okay? So this is bullish for XXX USD because the dollar index is bearish. Bearish USD news. Dollar index is bearish. So what will price do in order to go in order to go higher price should go down here first okay but over here price already went down so in this case what's the down movement referring to filling up a gap yeah goes into an order block and then price goes low okay what about this over here well over here nfp release took our low liquidity and then goes up that's perfect and look at this bearish bearish for the us dollar so it's worse than expected therefore the sentiment is bearish dollar index and bullish everything else 
everything else that's negatively correlated to the dollar. And finally, this month's news on the 1st of September, right there. What happened? Better than expected. So that means we're looking at a bullish dollar. Okay. The price goes up, takes out, buy side. So you see, this is an example where there is no gas. Price is going to gas station A, filling up the gas, and then slowly, slowly starts to reverse. So that's when the actual sentiment comes into play. Okay. That's when the actual sentiment comes into play. And you can see over here that for this day, on the 1st of September, we had a bullish reading on the dollar index for a non-farmed payroll, leading to lower prices in gold and everything else. And today, on this particular day, which is the 12th of September, price on gold melted <laughs> like crazy. All right, guys? That's all. So I hope you found this insightful. There's going to be more to come. I will be posting uh, fundamental videos for all news events so that you guys know how to how how best to navigate them. And at the same time, my blog, my the link to my blog is down below. The link to my Instagram is down below. And also, if you're interested in the private mentorship, don't forget to join. I'm sure you guys have seen my public journal where I share with you guys all my bias predict outputs and the trades that we take based on the bias predict output which has more or less than 80% plus guaranteed win rate. And yeah, everything else that you need to know is down in the description below. Be sure to join the mentorship. Be sure to follow me on all my socials. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Good luck and good trading. Bye-bye.